Um, I don't know. I don't think so. Well, here's here's the deal I'll make for that. Um, the day before spring break, that Friday before spring break, we think we are reassessing this test. So if you don't have to reassess, you can go to task sites. What do you mean? It's not how that works. Oh, look, that's what I'm saying. So that's how it works. Wait, I'm not going to go back. Whatever. We'll figure that out. Yes. If me and Carl do the answer fast, can everybody get exempted from the test? No. Cam. Yes, hurry up. June. What's that? No, you can't. Fasso doesn't run during this hour, so don't go to Fasso anyway. Oh, by the way, I'm not going to be the Okay, we'll talk. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Okay? All right. You guys, hey, let's go. We had, it's Wednesday. We got it going. So, hyperbolas today. We're talking about vertices, talking about graphing equations, talking about noticing equations, things like that. So, hyperbolas look like this. It's a conic section that consists of two vertices and two asymptotes. Now, if you look at the two graphs on my page here, the blue part is actually the hyperbolas. The red dashed lines are what we call asymptotes. We talked about those when we did um, exponential functions. We talked about their graphs. We talked about logarithmic functions. We talked about their graphs. <coughs> the asymptotes are lines that our graph will never cross. So they help us draw our graphs in. So we don't need to know exact points. Now, ours are going to look a little different. Ours are also going to have a nice little box on them. Because that will help us make our asymptotes and that will help us draw in our graphs. So ours look a little different than the ones just up here. They'll look more like that one there. But the real part of the graph, the real hyperbola, are just these red lines here. So everything else is going to be dashed. Now up there, the asymptotes aren't, but they will be. So this equation looks exactly, exactly like the ellipse, except instead of addition, it has subtraction. subtraction right? So. Subtraction, different denominators, equal to 1, is a hyperbola. Now, a squared, we talk about ellipses, is always the bigger number, right? When we're doing hyperbolas, a squared is always the first number given. All right? And the first thing given, whether it's x squared or y squared, determines which way I'm going to graph my hyperbola. If x squared is first, if it comes first, we're going to open left to right. Let's think about that. Which way does the x-axis go? Left to right. So if x squared is first, it goes left to right. I'm opening left to right. Okay? If y squared comes first, right? y squared comes first, I'm opening up and down. Well, think about it. Which way does the y-axis go? Up and down. So it kind of it goes with each other. So if y squared comes first, they're opening up and down. x squared comes first, they're opening left and right. All right, does that make sense? How to tell that? We said a squared is always our first term, opens up and down. If y squared is first, left and right, x squared is first. We good on that? Okay. Then let's talk about graphing one. The easiest way to learn is to do it. So, our first one, x squared over 16 minus y squared over 4 equals 1. What comes first, x squared or y squared? X squared. X squared, which tells me it's going to open. Left to right, just like the x-axis goes. So it's going to open left to right. Okay, my a squared value is that first one. So it's 16, b squared is 4. If a squared is 16, what does that make a? 4, four. four so you take the square root of it, right? a is under x, which tells me I'm going 4 to the left and 4 to the right. Just like we did with the ellipses. If it's under x, I'm going left and right. Okay? b squared is 4, which means b is 2. 2. b squared is under y squared, so it tells me I'm going up 2, down 2. Now, that is the exact same thing we did for ellipses, right? So if you can do that, ellipses, you should be able to do this. Okay. The difference is we're not drawing in any ellipse now. We're going to make what we call the box. The box goes through 
all four of these points, it have to be a dotted line. and it is a dotted line. Because we do not include the box in our graph technically. It's there just to help us make our graph. Okay? So we're going to draw our box in. It's a rectangle, right? <coughs> so once you have your dashed line box, you're going to take out your straight edge. Yes, you need to use a straight edge on the test. So what's going to happen is we're going to draw our asymptotes in. And they are going to guide us to draw our graph. So if your asymptotes are not straight, your graph is going to be off. So I'm going to use my tool here. And through the corners of my box, I'm drawing a dashed line. I'm actually drawing two of them through both sets of corners. Okay. The asymptotes do not need arrows. Can you put arrows on them? Yes, because they go forever, but I'm not worried about it because it's not our actual graph. Like so the line goes through, dotted too. The line goes through has to be dotted too because that's not our graph yet. It's just our asymptotes. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw them all the way through our graph. So we don't want to miss any part of it. Right? So don't stop short. Go all the way through. So we have our dotted box. We have our dotted asymptotes. And which way did we say it was going to open? Left and right. Left and right. So we're going to graph it now. Here's how we graph it. If it opens left to right, I'm using these two points on my box. I'm starting at that point, and I'm drawing arrows towards the asymptotes, but I'm not crossing them. That's the first part of my hyperbola. Second part goes over here. It's kind of like two parabolas from last unit. We're just getting really close to the asymptotes, but we're not crossing them. Now, what do you think is going to happen if, on a test, you draw hyperbola that look like these black lines here? It's going to get marked wrong. It's going to get marked wrong, right? Make an effort to get them close to your asymptotes. So I put them on the graph. Right? The lines look like the black ones, but technically they don't look like the black ones. Because like, If it looks like the black ones, it gets marked wrong. It looks like the red ones, but since your screen is bigger than mine, it makes them look like the black ones. Okay. As long as you're getting close to your asymptotes, you're following them along, you're not crossing them, you'll be good. All right? I get there's a margin for error there. I'm not going to be like, oh, his is more than a centimeter away, it gets marked wrong. I'm not, I'm not going to be like that. Right? As long as you're trying to get them close there, we'll be okay. All right. Then the last thing it's going to ask us to do, and just like with the ellipses, it won't actually ask us on the test. We still got to talk about the vertices. The vertices are the two points where it touches the box. Those two points we started with. So negative four zero and four zero. Those are our vertices. Our two vertex. The two points we touch the box at. Okay? And that's it. What's that? We're, those two points we started at here. Here and here. Okay? Alright. Let's try another one together. Try another one together. Y squared over 4 minus x squared over 16 equals 1. First of all, which way is this opening? What comes first, y squared or x squared? Y squared. Y squared, which tells me it opens up and down, just like the y axis goes. Okay? Guys. A squared is the first number that appears. So 4 is my a squared, which means my a value is 2. Take the square root of it. Square root of 4 is 2. b squared is 16, which means b is 4. All right. So a is under y squared. So if a is 2, I'm going up 2, down 2. b squared is under x squared. And if b is 4, I'm going left 4, right 4. Once I have my four points, draw in my box. Okay, I guess. Okay, so once you have your four points, just like with your ellipse, you draw in your box. Once we've made our box, we take our straight edge and we make our asymptotes, right? Through the corners of the box. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. I'll give you a second to get to here. Do you have a question? Yes, sir. Can you tell me if my lines are close enough? Can let me finish it and then when we go to you try the next two, then I'll come check. Okay? Alright. Do we all have our asymptotes drawn in? Okay. Once I have the asymptotes done in it, drawn in, I'm gonna look and see. I said it opens up and down. So I'm using the top and the bottom points. Going. Drawing them out. So we should not be crossing any dotted lines with our graphs in red there. Should not cross the box, should not cross the asymptotes. You can get really close to them, but we should not be crossing them. Okay? Then what are my vertices going to be? Zero, two, and zero, and zero, negative two. Very good. The two points we touch the box at. All right. There are two more for you to try. Try the first one, and then we'll go through it in a couple minutes. And try the second one, we'll go through that. All right. Yes, sir. Instead of doing it in dry, and just give it a color. Got it. Right, because the reason we make the dot is it's actually not part of the graph. I right? can't include that. Yes, you have that one.
Alright guys, check the first one. Check the first one. Hey, listen, listen. So, y squared comes first, which tells me it is opening up and down. Right? Y squared is first, so it's up and down. A squared is 25, so A is 5. Because it's under Y, I'm going up and down 5. B squared is 9, which means B is 3. Because it's under X squared, I'm going left and right 3. Draw in my box, draw in my asymptotes, and then remember, it's opening up and down. My two vertices, 0, negative 5, 0, 5. All right? Yes, Adam. I'm just going to ask for the vertices. I'm just going to ask you to graph it. All right. Okay? All right. Try the second one. I'm going to do it on the board quick as well. We'll compare our answers. Be good. Is Y always going to be A? No. No. Whichever one comes first with the hyperbola is A. No. Wait, whatever one comes first, not even the bigger one? The ellipses, it's the bigger one. Hyperbola is whichever one comes first. Oh, Good reason. I messed up. Big time. Big time mess up. So it doesn't matter. No, 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 so you you end up. that's how you Okay guys, so I'm gonna run through this one quick so we're running short on time. So we have a very small box in the middle, right? When you draw your asymptotes, please extend them through the whole graph, otherwise you're not going to draw your whole graph. Alright? So, through the whole thing, and then we'll be able to open it left to right, because x squared comes first. a squared is 1, which means a is 1 when I take the square root. It's so under x squared, so I'm going 1 left, 1 right. b squared is 4. I take the square root of that, I get 2. Because it is under y, I go up 2, down 2. Draw in my box. Draw my asymptotes through the whole coordinate plane, and I know it's opening left to right because x squared came first. So draw it in. Yes, sir. The asymptotes do not need arrows. The hyperbolas do. Swipe up, subscribe, like, and comment.